Hi there, my name's Sebastian and I'm with ECS Payments and today I'm gonna to show you how to set up your brand new Cloverflex Gen 3. First, we'll go over how to run a sale. Depending on where your sale icon is located, we'll just go ahead and have that pressed now. In this next menu, it's gonna be pretty straightforward. Um, just pretty much enter the amount of the transaction that you're looking to run. For this example, we'll go ahead and input a dollar and then hit charge at the bottom. This next screen will prompt you to either insert, tap, or swipe your card. For us, we don't have a tap on our card, so we're gonna go ahead and insert. Now, if you do have pin debit enabled, it will prompt you to enter the pin. For this example, we're just gonna go ahead and hit skip. And then you'll get a prompt that asks you to confirm if you'd like to bypass the pin entry. We're gonna hit yes. Remove your card when prompted to do so. And you'll get this cool little confirmation animation. Payment complete, and then your receipt will print out automatically. Now, if for whatever reason it doesn't print out automatically, you do have your option here. Um, in addition to, like, let's say I need to void the receipt or I need to go and email or text it to somebody, I can do that here. And then you can just hit done. And that's pretty much how you run a sale. Next, we're gonna go over how to run a refund on the device. So go ahead and press that now, wherever that may be located on your screen. Once you're in this screen, it's gonna look extremely similar to the sales screen. With that in mind, the easiest way to verify which screen you're in is based on the color and the word at the top. It says refund, so we know we're in the right place. I did run a transaction for a penny recently. That batch has already been closed, so I'm unable to void that transaction. So I'm gonna need to do a refund on it instead. So I'll go ahead and put in the amount of the transaction. So I'll hit one penny and then issue refund. Now, if this was a higher dollar amount, normally the machine would auto calculate the tax of that transaction too. So for instance, if this was a dollar, the tax would be about eight cents. So your total refund would be a dollar oh eight. Obviously, this is just a penny, so there's not really a way to calculate tax on that. Once you hit confirm, the next screen will prompt you to insert, tap, or swipe. So just go ahead and do that now. It'll process prompt you to remove your card and then give you a nice animation telling you that the refund was successful. And then the final screen will also say refunded and then the dollar amount. Now, if the receipt doesn't print out, you can go to print receipt here. It will then print out automatically. And then let's say you do need to either email or text it, or you wanted a receipt for your own records, you can go into this more options tab here at the bottom and select whatever option you need. Once you're all set, you can go back and hit done. And that's pretty much how you run a refund. Next, we'll go over how to close the batch out on the device. Um, so again, depending on where this icon is, just go ahead and press it now. And it should take you to this menu. It should look pretty similar to whatever you guys have on your machine, um, depending on however many machines you have linked to your MID. Um, for this example, we only have one, so we're just gonna click on this batch here and it'll tell you all the transactions, including refunds and things like that, that are inside of this batch. So you kind of have an idea of what you're working with inside of the batch before the receipt prints out. Um, this close out all devices option at the bottom is what you're gonna wanna press. It'll give you a confirmation prompt to close out all these devices, and then also explicitly tell you how many transactions and for what dollar amount you're batching out. Go ahead and hit close out if everything looks good. Now, if it is taking a while, you can see the option at the bottom where it says notify me when closed. Uh, depending on if you're strapped for time, you can select that option and it'll send you a notification when the batch has been settled. For us, we're just gonna go ahead and wait it out. And as you can see, when the batch does successfully close out, it's gonna print out a receipt. Just again, going over all the information that was available on the screen. And then at the bottom, you can print out the print totals report, which essentially would look like this just telling you what the server totals were. So if you're a restaurant and you have multiple employees that were running transactions through the night, it will allow you to see who ran what with how many transactions and with how many tips if applicable. Go ahead and hit the back out button and you'll see that this batch has been closed and a new one has automatically been opened. 
so you're ready to run more transactions. Next, we'll go over how to view our cash transactions. Let's say you threw away the receipt that printed out when you rang up a customer with cash and you just wanted to keep track of your total transactions for the day. You can use this application called Cash Log. Now we haven't run any cash transactions here yet. Um, so I wanna show you what it looks like when it's empty. But essentially it's saying, this is where you're gonna to come to view all of those cash transactions when they are run. So let's go run a cash transaction now. We'll go over to register. I was already in the menu ringing up another customer of mine already, um, and they told me that they wanted to use cash. So we'll go ahead and do the full dollar amount, 6464, and then we're gonna hit pay cash. So obviously they just handed me the cash, I put it in the drawer. They're saying payment complete. We'll print this receipt out. Perfect. All right, so this receipt is good, but we don't have the receipt anymore. And I wanna view that transaction. So we'll go right back into the cash log option. And as you can see here, that transaction is now showing up. So of course it's not gonna be as nice and put together as a receipt, but at least you'll be able to track those transactions accordingly. And that's pretty much it. So next we'll go over how to manually add discounts on the device itself. To start, we'll press the discounts option, wherever that may be on your home screen, um, and it'll take you immediately into the discounts menu. Now, previously we already added some different discounts, but I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like from start to finish. So if you wanna add something new, we're gonna press the screen plus sign down at the bottom. And these four options that they have to choose from is pretty self-explanatory. So for this discount name, we'll go ahead and put holiday. Perfect. The next option will pretty much have you decide whether or not you want to put a percentage or a dollar amount. Um, so for the holiday sale, I say we do 50% off. Then we'll want to make sure that the enabled option is checkmarked just because if it's not, then you're not going to see that discount as an option when you go to apply it later. Once everything looks good, we'll go ahead and hit save. And then you can see all the other discounts that are already in the menu. Um, so we'll take that information. And now when we're running sales through our register, we can simply just go ahead and add whatever items we'd like, throw it in our cart. And I already had a discount enabled. Now let's say I didn't want them to have the happy sale. I wanted them to have the holiday sale. We can go three dots in the top right corner, hit discounts, remove this discount here and simply just add discount and select the correct one. So instead of happy, I want to do 50, but then you also have an option to do custom percentage or a custom dollar amount. Let's say you didn't want to go back into discounts and make one and spend all that time in there. You can just do that from this menu. So go ahead and hit holiday. You'll immediately see that show up there. Hit done. And then it'll display at the bottom. So you can now pay either charge or card, or if you guys are using cash, you can go ahead and select those options there. And that's pretty much it. So that's how you set up your Cloverflex Gem 3. Thank you so much for watching and sticking around with us. For all of your other questions and troubleshooting related inquiries, feel free to visit us at ecspayments.com.